Hi everybody, very welcome to Mentor and yet another video podcast. As always, I hope you're doing absolutely fantastic. Today on the video, guys, we're going to be talking about the toga switches, those legendary switches who make things happen once you push them in the cockpit. We're going to be talking about what they do, what systems are involved, and what happens if you accidentally press the wrong one at the wrong time. Stay tuned. One zero, one zero, one six, right, one right, right, right. This video is brought to you in cooperation with Skillshare. Now, I know you're watching this because you are like me. You're a lifelong learner, someone who's curious and constantly wants to improve yourself. Now, what I'm doing at the moment is I'm actually using a Skillshare course to try to get to the bottom of what I'm trying to give to you through the channel. So, I'm using a course called uh, YouTube Success by Sorel Amore, which really goes down and pinpoints what you, as a new YouTuber, should be thinking about in order to get you know, the most value to your viewers. It's really good in order to focus on what's important and what's not. And if you want to start a YouTube channel, I highly recommend you check it out. But there are other courses as well. Photography, painting, pretty much anything that you can imagine. There are thousands of high quality video courses and the 1,000 first of you who uses this link here below will get two months of premium Skillshare absolutely for free. So go down and check it out. Door round, flap 15, set door round trust. Door round trust, set. Get up, that's great. Enter 360 going around. Hello. All right, guys. So this video is going to be a fairly technical one. All right. I've been asked to explain more of the technical systems of the 737, and that's what I'm going to do. If you've been watching YouTube videos about aviation, you've probably heard the phrase toga before. All right. It's normally talked about during critical phases of flight, like during the takeoff, for example, and during the go around. And actually, that is what has given the name to these switches. It's a Boeing system and it stands for takeoff and go around switches. Some refer to them as to get action switches, but not really correct. Now, in order for you to understand the toga switches, you need to understand that the autopilot flight director system on the 737 is divided into essentially three parts. Okay? Those parts can operate independently of each other. And they also, most of the time, operate together. And that is the outer throttle. If you look at your flight mode annunciator, which is the top part of your primary flight display, the outer throttle is to the very left there. It shows the auto throttle channel and what the auto throttle is doing. And then you have the flight directors. And the flight directors, they will indicate to the pilot how they need to fly in order to follow whatever mode they've chosen from the mode control panel. Okay, so it will show a cross if you need to fly straight and level. It will show a cross that goes up a little bit if you want to climb and then it's going to show the, the middle bar going left or right depending on how you need to turn and the combination of those so climbing, descending, turns and so on. It's a very intuitive system uh, and it's very very effective. And then the third one is the autopilots. Okay? So the autopilots are actually inputting commands to the flight controls for example. Um, so the autopilot it can actually fly without the flight directors. The auto throttle can work without the flight directors and without the autopilot. So these things, they work independently. And because they do, you kind of need something that focuses, that makes sure that they all do the right thing in the right order during very critical moments of flight, namely during takeoff and during go around. And this is where the toga switches comes in. So the toga switches are uh, situated on top of the thrust levers. Um, you are supposed to use these two fingers if you're a captain or these two fingers if you're a first officer uh, and they're seated so when you're holding the thrust level like this you just need to extend those fingers and push either of the toga switches. Okay? If you push both of them at the same time that works as well. It just counts as one toga push. It's not to be confused with the outer throttle disconnect switches which are on the handle on the outside of the handle and you use like your thumb 
for example, to disconnect the auto throttle. All right, so you use these fingers to activate the toga and these fingers to activate the auto throttle disconnect switch. Now, let's have a look at the different scenarios when we use them. Then I'm going to give you five different scenarios. And in today's video, I'm not going to be talking about the single engine scenario because it's slightly different and I'll do that in a separate video. Now, if we start with logically the takeoff, um, during the takeoff, the pilot flying will initiate the takeoff by just standing the thrust levers up to about 40%. That's to make sure that the engines accelerate and that we you know, have the same acceleration going before we actually add too much thrust to them to avoid uh, asymmetrical thrust during the initial part of the uh, takeoff. So the pilot flying will stand the thrust levers up to 40. Pilot monitoring will call stabilized when both of them are at the same approximate value. Pilot flying looks down, verifies, presses toga, and says, set takeoff thrust. The first thing that will happen then is, as you notice, I'm extending the arm. This means the thrust levers will start moving up. And they will move up to whatever value that we have calculated is going to be the safe takeoff thrust value. So when the pilots are sitting at the gate and we are inputting things like the temperature, the wind, the weight, the outside pressure, um, use of anti-ice, all of these things, we will come up with a thrust setting that is safe to use on the runway we are going to be using. We try to get that thrust as low as possible to extend engine life and to minimize noise and to minimize fuel use. And once we've set that into our FMC, when we press toga, the outer throttle providing that it is actually armed, is going to set the thrust to that value. Now, it's still very important that the pilot monitoring follows the thrust levels up and verifies that you get the correct thrust set. Because if we're taking off in very gusty conditions, for example, the thrust will only be setting itself up until we reach about 84 knots. When we reach 84 knots of indicated airspeed, it will go into throttle hold and it will just hold the thrust levels where it is. So if we have really gusty winds, it might not have set the correct thrust when it reaches 84 knots. And in that case, the, the pilot monitoring have to set it manually. Okay, so the thrust goes up to the correct value that we have calculated. Now the flight directors, the flight directors, they will be not much help during the actual takeoff roll, but it will do a few things. As you push toga, it will go into takeoff mode. The first thing it will do is it will initiate a pitched down with 10 degrees. Right, so it show us, the flight directors will show us 10 degrees nose down. What that does, it is just reminds the pilot to give a little bit of forward pressure on the control collar. And the reason you want to do that is because you want a little bit of pressure on the nose wheel so that the nose wheel steering is effective up until the rudder becomes aerodynamically effective at around 60 knots. So at 60 knots, the flight directors will go from 10 degrees nose down to 15 degrees nose up. Very important to know that we're not using the flight directors as guidance from when we rotate. They will only be sitting there at 15 degrees nose up. So we will continue the takeoff roll when we hear V1, V1 rotate. rotate, pilot flying will start to rotate nice and slowly about two and a half to three degrees Positive per second degree. up to an initial pitch of about Gear. 15 to 17 degrees depending on weight. Only after you've done that initial rotation can routes. you follow the flight directors. Okay. Right? Flight directors will feel then what kind of speed you have and they will give you a pitch that will give you about V2 plus 20 as speed. All right? Up until 400 feet they're using heading select so make sure that the runway heading is correctly set on your uh, mode control panel and at 400 feet we select a roll mode, which is probably going to be LNAV because that's going to give us the standard instrument departure that we have calculated um, when we were at gate. And we will just continue to fly then, according to, to the flight directors. We are flying it manually. Generally, this is a little bit company dependent, but up to about a thousand feet. And at a thousand feet above ground level, then we will engage the autopilot. So we never use the autopilot for takeoff, right? So basically the thing that the toga does during the takeoff, it gives us the trust, it gives us guidance from the flight directors, but only really after we've rotated and the autopilot will be engaged once we're up to about a thousand feet AGL. All right, cool. 
So that's for the takeoff. Obviously, there's much more information that I could be giving you here as well as we continue the, uh, the, the, uh, the takeoff maneuver, but I just want to give you the initial bits here. Now, during the rest of the flight, as we are climbing, cruising, descending, the toga buttons are not really used for anything. You could potentially get into a wind shear, and in that case, they do work, but we'll talk about that towards the end of the video. But the next time that you will really use the toga buttons are during the approach. We're gonna talk about a couple of different types of approaches here. And the first thing that I wanna talk about is the category three outer land approach. So during an outer land approach, you will be using the instrument landing system at the airport that you're going to, and you're also going to use both autopilots. There are two different autopilot channels on the 737. Both of them have to be engaged in order to do an outer land. And that's simply because it's a redundancy. And if one autopilot channel feels that you need to turn and another autopilot says, no, actually you need to go straight ahead, then the system knows that something is up, but it doesn't know what, and it just disconnects and you're unable to do an outer land. It is very, very important that you have this kind of monitoring and this kind of redundancy in the system if you're going to do an outer land because you're so low in visibility, right? But in this case, the toga button is going to be uh, armed from when you're below 2,000 feet or you are coupled to a glide slope or you have flaps more than up. So as you start to select flaps. But now the toga buttons are um, activated and they are one of a very few ways that you can actually disconnect from the approach mode. Once the uh, 737 has kind of engaged in both localizer capture and glide slope capture, it's very hard to get out of it, all right? And one of the ways to get out of it is to push the toga button. That will disengage the approach mode. You can also detune the ILSs. That's another way. But anyway, as you are descending down, on the, um, on the glide slope. It's very important to make sure that the system is working perfectly. Uh, there are several indicators that you need to check during the descent. And if you are interested in seeing exactly how we fly an approach like this, both the outer land and a go around of an outer land, I have a collection inside of the Mentor Aviation app called the CAT3 collection that you can go in and check. Right? You will see the whole procedure flown in 360, so you can look around and you can see which pilot is doing what. But anyway, if you get down to the minima on a outer land approach and you don't see anything, well then the pilot flying is going to push the toga buttons. All right? uh, the pilot flying in this case is always going to be the first officer. And once the toga buttons are pushed, a lot of things is going to happen. This is one of the reasons you have toga, because the toga will, as I was mentioning before, kind of direct all of the different systems to work together so that the pilot doesn't need to figure everything out by him or herself in a very critical moment. So as you push toga, the outer thrust is going to go to reduced go-around thrust and you're going to get go-around in the flight mode annunciator. So with one push of toga, it goes up to about 90% of thrust. And the reason you're not getting full go-around thrust is that this reduced go around thrust is going to give you about 1,000 to 2,000 feet per minute climb. That's sufficient to get you a safe climb away from the ground. It's going to give you all the obstacle clearance that you need, uh, but it's going to be a nice kind of relaxed way of doing the go around. If you get full go around thrust up to 95, 97%, it's going to climb much faster than that. And there's a risk that you might rush things or shoot through your missed approach altitude. So toga, go around, flap 15 is going to be the call, in which case the thrust goes up to reduce go around thrust. If you want full go around thrust, you have to push the toga once, let the thrust levels advance, then push it a second time. If you do that, then you get full go around thrust. And it won't say go around anymore in the flight mode now, it's gonna say N1. So now you have the thrust. You are starting to select the go around flaps, okay? Next thing that's going to happen is that the flight directors is now going into go around mode, which means that they will be pitching you up to give you about a thousand to 2000 feet per minute initially uh, of climb. And then it's going to give you the speed that keeps you safe at your current flap setting with maximum takeoff weight. So basically the FMC calculates that, all right, 
So they're doing a go around. Uh, I'm going to pretend that they have maximum takeoff weight and I'm going to indicate the speed they need to be at in order to be safe with the current flap setting. Now, all of you know that if you're doing a go around, you're not going to be at the maximum takeoff weight. So what will actually happen is that the um, aircraft is going to pitch down a little bit from the initial pitch and it's going to start accelerating. Now that acceleration will then enable us to take the next flap setting, which is something that we start doing about 400 feet. When you select the next flap, so from flap 15, it's going to be flaps 5. Now, the flight director is giving you the pitch for the safe speed at maximum takeoff weight for flaps 5, which will enable you to go to flaps 1 and the flaps up. All right? So, a lot of people think that this is a function that the uh, flight director system have in order to enable you to retract flaps. But in fact, that's really a secondary function to what the flight director, the directors are actually doing. But it does enable you to retract the flaps during the go around. Now, when it comes to where to turn, when you press toga, the uh, uh, flight directors will maintain the current ground track you have. So if you're flying in on an ILS approach, you're going to be flying straight for the runway. As you press toga, the middle part of the flight mode denunciator is going to blank. You're still going to have a flight director telling you to fly straight ahead. You know, it will take the wind into account. It will just keep your track going until you select a different roll mode. And that tends to be at about 400 feet, pilot flying calls for what roll mode you want to use. If you've been given a radar heading by air traffic control, well, that's what you're going to put in. Otherwise, you'll just get LNAV, and LNAV is going to let you fly the rest of the maneuver, All right? And crucially, the third part of the system. In case of an autoland, you have both autopilots connected to the system. This time, when you press toga, the autopilots are going to remain engaged, and you're going to get them flying the go-around for you. So you're going to get an automatic go-around, right? But that only happens if you are doing an autoland. Right? So that brings me to the next type of approach, which is a standard ILS approach, which is what we do maybe 90% of the flights that we do. Well, in this case, everything is very similar to a Cat 3, except you don't engage the second autopilot. So the, um, the approach is initially flown only with the help of one autopilot. And this means that if you're coming in during maybe slightly misty conditions, you get down to your minima and you realize, actually, I don't see enough to land. Maybe Cat 3 is not available to you. When you press Toga in this case, the autopilot is going to disconnect. So all of the other function will be there for you. You have the auto throttle, providing that the auto throttle is still engaged. It will be setting go around thrust for you. The flight directors will be indicating how you're going to fly to achieve what we just talked about. But the autopilot will not be there. It will disconnect as you press toga and you're gonna to have to fly this missed approach manually. And the way that we do that is we fly it manually up to when we reach the missed approach altitude. And once we're at the missed approach altitude, the aircraft is trimmed out, we've got the flaps up and everything. Well then the pilot flying will re-engage the automatics going from right to left on the mode control panel. So autopilot, verifying that the modes that they want is in, auto throttle. All right? If you have disconnected the autopilot and auto throttle and you're flying manually, and then you decide to go around, when you press toga, you're not gonna get the go around thrust automatically. You're gonna have to set it yourself. And the way that we do that is we give one arm. The way that the uh, cockpit is set up on the 737 is if you're sitting in the correct position and you give one arm's length, no matter how long arm you have, actually, you are going to get very close to exact the go-around thrust. And then the pilot monitoring can readjust it to give you about 90% or so, which is to reduce go-around thrust. All right? Then, the last type of approach that I want to talk about is a raw data approach. Because if you are uh, doing a non-precision approach, a VR, a localizer, an NDB, for example, uh, the functionality of the toga buttons are exactly the same as a single channel um, ILS approach. But if you're flying a raw data approach, which is when you turn off the flight directors, or if the flight directors are not working for you, well then, the toga buttons has a slightly different um, use. So you wouldn't really do this with passengers on board. Right? We do not degrade the aircraft systems to, to practice. We do that in the simulator. But if the system is not functioning well, well then 
As you're flying now, your road eight approach, you don't have flight directors helping you anymore. You probably, well, you definitely won't have the, lock, the uh, automatics engaged in any way. You're gonna fly this manually. When you get down to minima, or if you're not stabilized, when you press toga, even if the flight director switches are off, you're still gonna get flight director guidance. And it's only gonna give you the current ground track, and it's gonna give you the pitch attitude. All right, just like before. The problem here is that as soon as you get into a different pitch mode, as in when you get to altitude acquire and you're leveling off at your missed approach altitude, or when you choose a different mode, for whatever reason, the flight directors will retract and you won't be able to get them back again until you switch them back on. So on a raw data approach, you will have flight director guidance, even if the switches are off when you press toga, but only for a very limited time and you will not be able to choose a different roll mode or a different pitch mode. The last thing that I want to talk about when it comes to the toga buttons are uh, its function during a wind shear. So in a wind shear escape maneuver, what the toga buttons will do is will, it will recognize that the GPWS is, is feeling a wind shear. So you hear the, the tone, Dee -doo, wind shear, wind shear, wind shear. When that is up and it's showing wind shear on the primary flight display in red, then when you press toga, you're gonna get the wind shear escape maneuver logic going. The way that that works is it tries to keep you climbing away until it feels that your climb rate is going below 600 feet per minute. When that happens, because you have a negative wind shear, for example, it will tell you to pitch up to 15 degrees. And just hold that, okay? And then it will hold that until you get intermittent stick shaker. And after that, it will just hold you on the stick shaker. So it will pitch you down a little bit to get out of stick shaker, pitch you up again until you get it, and then keep there in order to maximize your chances to keep away from the terrain. Now, when you're getting out of the wind shear, or if the speed is starting to increase, it will just reverse that. So it will go to 15 degrees when it has 600 feet per minute, then it will pitch up to keep whatever speed that you have in your mode control panel. All right, so basically toga mode in this case is just trying to keep you away from terrain, keeping you as safe as possible. It might not be able to, but it will do its best. Okay, great. So that's the different functions of toga. There are more, like I said, when we have uh, an engine failure, for example, it does another couple of things. Uh, and there are small details that I haven't brought up in this episode, but essentially this is what you need to know. Now, I promise to talk a little bit about the problems that we have with toga switches, and it has mostly to do with the way that they're situated. So when we do uh, an ILS approach, especially during line training, for example, when the cadets are getting ready to disconnect the autopilot and fly the aircraft manually, they have the option of either using these two, switch these two fingers to disconnect the uh, auto throttle, or these two to press toga. And since they're a little bit nervous and you know, they're getting ready to disconnect, sometimes they push the wrong buttons. So instead of disconnecting the outer throttle, they now press toga. And of course, what happens then? The aircraft goes into a go around. Now there are two different ways that can happen there. Now as a, as a line training captain, I'm fairly used to seeing this. So I can very quickly take controls and disconnect. And if I can keep the aircraft stabilized so it hasn't had the time to start pitching up and adding thrust, then I can continue to land visually. Remember, the flight directors are now showing go around, so we can't use them, but I can continue to land the aircraft visually, providing that I keep it stabilized. If I don't have the time to do that, or if the aircraft is, has destabilized itself, gotten too high, pitched up, thrust on, well then we just have to execute a go around, okay? Like I said before, there's a no blame policy for go around, uh, but we try to avoid these things because they're unnecessary, they burn fuel, take time, make, people anxious for no real reason. So there's a lot of emphasis on going into briefing the cadets before the disconnect, right? All right, remember where you have your, your fingers, make sure that you press the correct buttons. Okay, that's all I had guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this. this is a slightly more technical video, which I'm going to do more of. So make sure that if you like these kind of videos that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the notification bell. 
I want to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of this episode, which is Skillshare. Now, if you want to continue to learn, maybe learn some new stuff, uh, then the thousand first of you who uses this link here below will get two months of premium Skillshare absolutely for free. So go and check it out. I promise that you'll find something that you'll enjoy. Have an absolutely fantastic day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Right guys, I really hope that you liked that. If you want more content like that, more aviation content, well then, check this out. Uh, I hope that you have subscribed to the channel and that you've highlighted the little notification bell. See you inside of the Mentor Aviation app and have an absolutely fantastic day. Bye-bye.